Get that. Hey, are you excited for phase three? Yes, I have commissioned three pieces of art of one of the characters that I want to play, and I don't even know if it's the character I'm going to play. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty excited for phase three. And every day, every day is is phase three for me. It's been so, it's been so wild. It's been I've been sitting here like. I want to I want to play D and D, but I have to wait. <laughs> I have to wait. How many I, more days? I um, cry. I actually am not craving D and D right now, which is pretty sick and also very concerning. I'm on my winter break from college still right now. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. I've had I've had that feeling of like I'm not doing anything. Something's missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not yeah. doing D and D. I'm not doing homework. I'm not. I'm taking a break from streaming. Yo, like, what's going on? Yo, let me tell you right now. Uh, because I'm not doing any D and D whatsoever. I don't know what day it is, ever. But I told you that when I was in a bunch of your stuff, and then you you ended two of them. I was like, what day is it? Hey, I don't sir. remember. What hey, time is it? How do time zones work? Uh, I don't know, dude. You're, you're 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 here. That's the right time. You're here at the right. Okay. You're actually right on time, man. Uh, I was Stero was telling everyone you got a uh, session zero happening this Saturday, right? Yep. Yep. Big day. Are you excited? Are you excited for that? He's never uh, excited for anything. It's it's not real until it happens, and I still mm. have so much work to do. <laughs> oh man, I uh man, I feel you. Good good luck, my friends. Like it's... it'll be done the hour before, and then I'll see yep. how it all goes. Yep, <laughs> that was that was the final battles of uh, phase two. I, I was still putting shit together just the hours before we were about to go live. I was like, still gotta get this work. I still gotta get it done. Yep. I know. Uh, I know from uh, last session zero. I know that every time someone asks me a question, I'm surprised how much I know about literally nothing, like imaginary <laughs> nothing. You're just looking into the void. You're just like, I did so much prep, and I know nothing. <laughs> Why do I not have the answer to this? Fuck. Well, no, no, no. The opposite. Why do I know so much about oh, well, see, imaginary things? Where someone asks some obscure question, you're like, oh. Oh, here's you just a, have an here's answer, an answer for it. Yeah, that's just that just comes with the territory of DMing, I feel like, you know. I feel like that's just that just it is. You'll surprise yourself with the, just the things that'll just come out of your mouth and you're like, holy shit, that actually like, that didn't sound half you're just, bad. <laughs> you're just vibing there and somebody asks you a question like, How, what's the sneak attack damage of a 13th level rogue? Uh, it's 76. Oh my god, I knew it. it I just, was like, I it think it's 76. Out. It's oh just the vault god. of useless knowledge until it is useful. Oh, well, yeah, no. you think you're underprepared forever and then you run a session. You go, wait, I knew it. I knew it. Holy shit. I did it. The session's over. It didn't suck. That's amazing. Yeah. You also have a uh, chat. Chat will scream it out to you at that point. Not for me. No one knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not Sam. I'm not Sam is aware of this happening. Not sure if Sam's aware of this. Uh, Sam will show up when he shows up. He, Sam likes to push it a few minutes away. So uh I trust him. Here, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna say, okay, got it. And I'm gonna drop a smiley face in his chat. All right, I've done, I've done all that I need to, I, I've done all that I need to do. The smiley face has been dropped. And then I will now close the gate and close the door. At that point, smiley yeah. face. Well, that if, if Sam doesn't show up, then uh, Mammoths just won't exist in IO. That's just what because happens. yeah, <laughs> Whoops is still asleep. Whoops Sam's is... supposed to be talking for him and Whoops. Yeah, if Whoops is uh, if Whoops is asleep and uh, Sam doesn't show up, well then the, they will both be asleep at that point in time. And then if they're both asleep at that point in time, they'll just someone will murder them in their sleep, and then it's uh, it's done. They die. Yeah, it's the Mammoth Wrath. The Mammoth Wrath race is at that point completely gone. Yeah, I can't believe Sam killed an entire species. Ah, well, let's uh, let's at least get into it. So yeah, today I, I just wanted to do kind of like an above board, uh, 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 oh, like roundtable conversation of like what your characters would have done since we didn't really get to do a season two of Nova Hellscape. And so just kind of get like a general feel and understanding of like what your characters would have done, what would have happened, because the choices that you would have made, and I might roll some dice here and there just to check on some stuff as well. Um, 
will determine what happens for the next phase of IO that's happening, which is about mm, 500 to 1,000 years later. And the hellscape's supposed to be like the, the birth of like the demon race uh, on IO because you guys have come from the scorching wasteland sun where like survival is just this, it's like you uh, desperately, you desperately need to survive. Um, so, uh, Stir, I'll actually start with you. Uh, you are the one that's kind of like at the gate, right? You're the one that's been at the, the giant, the giant ass portal that actually takes you to Io since you, De uh, Deborah like left herself. Uh, well, you, you said 5,000 years. I don't know if she's been chilling. Oh, 5, no, no, no. This years. is, this is now. This is like, if we did a season two, like what oh, okay. would, what would Deborah be doing for the rest of her life? at that point is she just chilling is she like because the portal's definitely going to attract people over who may have you know a may have heard of this giant obelisk area where people are surviving or people may just see this giant be portal beacon and be like yo what the fuck is that <laughs> what would deborah do if like people started showing up and she's the only Sell one standing tickets. there yeah <laughs> so she's like, like, uh, yeah, like, I think she would like set up a kiosk and just like charge people <laughs> to go, uh, you Check know, torment out. another world. Oh, so literally like give me some food and then you guys can actually go through. Yeah, like point. some sort of offering. I don't think she would be interested herself still, but she would be smart enough to profit from it. Uh -huh. Yell through the portal. Grandma, they got grass in here. Would she would she ever cross the gate? Like would she ever go through? Or would she just stay in the hellscape? Because that's where no, she she just is. hang out. I'm I'm picturing uh the line to a, a Six Flags roller coaster. <laughs> oh my god! Come here and invade another world right over here, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, like like a power thing too. Because if she denies you, then it's like, damn. Would she would she strive for power? Would you say like would she try and like? create her own like tribe or like 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 try and create her own like power grab at this point in time uh i guess so because you would need your own society that would be like keepers of the gate in a way and they would mm. just uh you know it would be like demon tourism is their number one export mm -hmm. so the way they they make all their money is the the offer of letting people through mm -hmm. but once you let people through you can't charge them anymore so it'd have to be a lot It'd have to be like, you know, because it, in a way you're almost selling freedom, I feel like, because you're like, yo, this world sucks. You guys are A little starving. bit. Yeah, and you guys also are starving. Like, yeah. Like selling uh, Viking raids as well. Like you mm -hmm. can go raid the new world, but you gotta, you know. You gotta pay up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Got. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, because that, that would absolutely make sense if you're like selling the promise of just like, this world has been tapped and rated for for like all of its resources, but this is an unspoiled area. And those that have come in have never, you know, came out because they don't have to, because they have found a new society and, and a new civilization over there at that point in time. So, mm. especially if they come back, then it's like, you know, I take a cut. <laughs> if they your, ever came back, I don't think Viking they would. Raid. Maybe, I mean, maybe some would just come back just to like spread news or like some of some of these these demons kind of have instilled this like value of uh of well, honor a I, little I guess, bit where they're like let me they, ask the yeah the high level arcane questions would yes. there be a way to like uh how do i put this bind people by like a time limit Ooh, i think well because you're what, what were you sorcerer uh like or wizard a uh, clockwork sorcerer. Yeah, I would think you would have found some sort of way because if you're establishing this as like your your source of power or like you're you're, like make them get visas and then they get getting, the yeah, a little a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, I could I could totally imagine like once your power gets strong enough, especially if you're offering people a chance at sal not salvation but a, a chance of like survival when everything is so barren and this is just like a world that's ready. Um, I would imagine that at some point in time, yeah, you you probably could absolutely like bind them over to like a recall after a certain uh, certain point of time. I would imagine. They gotta get work visas. <laughs> yeah, basically work visa demon sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And and then she's the one who gives them out so she can maintain the power of the gatekeeping. <laughs> so she's literally she is the gatekeeper at that point. Yeah, the gatekeeper between uh, that there. Okay. So that would definitely mean that 
demons would be wandering outside the portal at that point in time and just like yeah so that definitely would mean that there would be more than just four demons wandering around that after over time probably at first the original four um which would be you know summer uh sure four uh whoops and and uh stripping you guys would probably i mean you guys are the first ones to sort of like tap into that area i'd imagine it'd probably be a, a while before people would start wandering over to the portal because haha uh everyone uh everyone at this point in time is um dead because <laughs> Cool, cause sure. Well, no, sure for it. You, uh, you opened, you fucking opened the gate, and I was like, "This might kill everybody." And you're like, "I'm doing it," and you did. You opened mm -hmm. it, and it murdered everybody. So this it was funny. You got <laughs> it was funny, lol. Well, you so that it's essentially, a black star, bro. Yeah, but I mean, that means you guys essentially got like a head start on everything at that uh, at this point in time. Um, when it comes to like IO and what you want to do, especially with everything that's going there. Clockwork starts recruiting timed adventurers. I mean, essentially, pretty much at that point, I'd imagine. So, um, one thing I do want to ask, uh, sure for your character was like, like your your character literally was about to go insane because the like you no longer experienced like the other a communal. Yeah, you are you are you are alone for the first in time in silence now. Yeah so like what would what would you because your yours i probably was like the biggest wild card of them all because yeah you you lived in silence at this point hello mm -hmm. hey bud hi sam how you doing bud good we uh we were actually just talking about um we went through deborah's uh storyline of what she would be doing uh deborah essentially is is the epitome of a gatekeeper as people are like wandering to the portals, she's offering them like, hey, there's these lands that are on the other side that are you know, filled with resources and then you don't have to worry about uh, shit anymore. Um, but uh, we we're also talking about Deborah like timing people with her uh, with her clockwork magics to like recall them back uh, to the to the hellscape to the Nova hellscape. Um, but that definitely would mean after a period of time, there would be an influx of demons that would go out, uh, pillage, and then be recalled back um, as Deborah would at, take like a, a, a portion of those that have been tapped in or uh, the resources have been and tapped through at this point in time. Uh, and now we're going through Sure's storyline of just like, like Sure now just hears nothing. Like hears nothing at all at this point. Like Sure is just all alone. Um, and yeah, so yeah, could continue on with that. Like, what are, what are your thoughts now that you're like completely tapped out? You're completely all alone. What well, now? I was gonna, yeah, it was gonna usually base what he would do based on the interactions he had in the new place, right? Mm -hmm. But if I had to say an overarching thing, because we didn't get the chance to do that, yeah. it would probably go around the route of like the psycho murderer kind of guy who mm -hmm. uses the voices of others to quench that silence kind of thing. Oh my god. Like, to, like, oh, you mean like the screams of people yeah. so that you no longer have to hear Being the silenced. silence? Jesus Christ. Okay. Fiddle, fiddlesticks. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Oh my god. Yeah, so that would that, that would literally transform because, oh my god. I just realized, yeah, any Kindle that would go through the portal would probably have the same thing happen to them the, mm -hmm. because their connection to the black star would be completely severed holy shit okay so stir when you start recalling back these these the, these kindled essentially and they're like insane like they they actually look like insane creatures like what would you what would you do at that point since you're keeping the gate right now like it like kindled goes in and then this insane shadowy creature would come Didn't out. Didn't the gate close behind us? Oh uh, no. <laughs> it's open. No, it's open. Oh it's it's oh. yeah. The war is making people get visas. Yeah, it's 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 well, probably... it's open at the hellscape, not open <laughs> in IO. We don't yeah. know where it is in IO. Yeah, We're selling so, tickets. 
Yeah, so right now, yeah, as far as Selling like... Selling tickets off of this shit, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's it. That's exactly well, it. Well, not off, because they, they gotta get recalled. Exactly, it's work visas. That's You yeah, go pillage for a year or two, and then you gotta come back. Deborah, Deborah uses her magic to keep the gates and, and figure out how to exactly control, you know, how to keep the gate open or keep the gate closed, because that's I, Deborah. I feel like that's Deborah's, like line of survival at that point in time, which has always been Dobara's line of survival. I would prefer if the recall, so to speak, was just them dying. And then I think the Kindled would be so crazy, they'd probably just die on the other side. Unless like, one did come back, then I don't know how controllable one would be. So what do you mean by dying? Like the recall being dying? Like what? what like what if you mean? have a certain amount of time limit to go to the other side and you're not back through the portal by the time limit, then you just die. Oh, you just like, your your heart stops essentially. Oh. Yeah, whatever awful demonic fiery powers. Well, I mean, because you, you would essentially continue to be tapping into your clockwork power, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So, so at that point in time, I could totally imagine where you were like, your recall isn't necessarily a teleportation recall. It is a, I have placed... You know, you will return. You have an you expiration date. It could even be just that when they come back, she removes it. Yeah, that. I mean, that's that's exactly it. It's like you're literally putting like clockwork magic on the heart of these creatures that are going through, and it's like you need to return after I don't know, like a fortnight or something. It's and like then, that movie In Time where they have like a clock on their wrist, and then it slowly ticks down. Yeah. Oh man, you could have like a visual representation of what they would need to be doing and everything. Oh yeah. So. That's interesting. I could totally see a demonic, like a shat, almost like a shadowy demon race or a demon, a uh, 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 a demon of silence, uh, where the kindled are essentially been replaced by, or, or uh, not replaced, but the kindled have become this sort of like, like a, we can even call it like a, a silenced demon, where everything around them is a silenced, hushed, a silenced hush, and they only are eased by the screams and suffering of other they they desire to be released from the silence or something like that but it does sound like like the kindled are not going to be this enlightened race that i originally thought they would be now that they're separate they're separated from the black star what what do you uh uh sure for what do you think about how they'll act as a whole yeah 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 like like because you're describing to me like they're they're inflicting suffering onto others specifically because they they desire they want to hear the sound again they want to hear well if i had to look at it as a whole yeah please. i feel like it would be more of a coin flip between every singular one right mm -hmm. because now they truly have some sense of individuality and just like humans whenever someone goes through a significant trauma it's pretty much like path roads that they choose or mm -hmm. which path they go after that I'm so thinking. some may become enlightened some may go on the edge of insanity mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i just chose geth went down the edge of insanity geth type road. Lost his fucking mind yeah i uh man that, that sounds like a uh sub races for kindled now where it literally is that exactly what you said that two sides of of a different coin of just like uh, enlightenment versus insanity and that uh i would man i would almost feel like the enlightened would be more rare than the than the insane and what's unfortunate is geth would become that Ooh, i like the idea of what if, the, what if the enlightened Please. use the they lose the ability to to see the future mm -hmm. and the insane ones almost gain more of that ability and it compounds their insanity see I they're now I seeing the future of multiple different dimensions mm -hmm. i like i i like that idea but the the reason why they went insane is because they both they they all lose that they both lose the ability to kind of like peek into the future or if you want to go like one step oh i thought they lost the hive mind i didn't know they lost the oh they they the essentially ability. all all of their connections they're not necessarily looking into the future they're actually pe they peer into different realities but we can kind of play off that a little bit and make it so that those that are insane are just so desperate, right? They are absolutely just so desperate 
to peer to to see reality again to 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 gain that but the realities they see are so twisted and maniacal wouldn't that, hang on what, what so wouldn't if they're yeah. a hive mind and mm-hmm. they see different realities and they get severed then wouldn't the enlightened ones see the specific reality they are in and thus be a- actually clairvoyant and that well that that's what it is that so they they would see their their reality and they could probably see have a little bit of foresight i'd imagine which is what makes them enlightened because they because the uh the kindle their their foresight comes from looking into peering into other realities and seeing the result of that um i could oh, ooh, i could totally imagine like the enlightened kindled um like one of their their racial bonus would essentially almost be like almost like a lucky roll where they they are able to peer ahead so far that they can kind of they can kind of prepare for like a uh a, an inevitable like misfortune um it's it's hard to explain but it, it kind of is like that just like they can prepare for the best and worst outcome in a situation exactly because they've it, seen it so many times when they it, were it, it's essentially like an advantage role like you get like one free advantage role per day or something like that because of your uh, ability to like manipulate things uh, a little bit. Kindle sub races are just the stages of grief. Oh my god, that is actually true. But for the insane, I would imagine that they are just trying to hear the voices again, trying to peer into different realities again. But it's become so lost and so twisted that they never actually see what they can see like they look at it and they it's, it's just that that look of like it's all wrong this isn't correct i don't it, it, you you almost kind of begin to question the realities that you're peering into and it's just like am i actually seeing other realities again or am i just losing my mind and my mind is now playing all these tricks on me kind of thing. well the, the the he can go even deeper in Please. a way where they're not even like they're not just murder hobos right they're not right, just like right, clearly right. Insane. it like more you could even do things like it goes more on the ends of like schizophrenia or now mm-hmm. the only voice they hear is their own in a way mm-hmm. but they don't recognize their own voice so like you know obtrusive thoughts mm-hmm. say they get one of those and they think it's someone else finally talking to them so they're gonna do it so they think their unconscious is literally a different person a different yeah. entity and they oh, i'm gonna i'm actually gonna add that of it. Uh, there's a tra- I, I want a trait called ob- obtrusive thoughts i don't know what I don't know what it is yet, but I definitely want to think more on that. But I like this like split of Kindle and that this could this could literally be player races that people can if people want to go into the Kindle um like into the Kindle tree and um be a Kindle. This does kind of bring like an, a, a sort of enlightened thing. I'm I'm currently actually working on a, a changeling sub race. Uh Sam, I showed you this. It was yeah. It was the, I think it was the Pale Moon Changeling, and it felt very much like a a, a vampire, the Masquerade race, the one that that are kind of insane. But from an, what is it? it, it have, have, have any of you guys played Vampire the Masquerade? Like the the mm-hmm. yeah, I have not. Yeah. Like the Malkavian or something like that. Yeah, Malkavian. Yeah. So we're like, it almost is that that like there's there's a a, a a Changeling that kind of functions a little malkavian ish because they've they've been separated from people or they've never yeah they've been separated from people for so long that they, they, they kind of have they're a little off essentially but it almost feels like this version of kindled kind of takes that in a different direction and i do agree uh i do like the i i do like the idea that there is no absolute so you don't have necessarily have an insane Kindle that is like, oh, they they're murder hobos. Exactly what you said. It is sort of like that, like they have psychopathic tendencies. Yeah, yeah. You almost kind of have to look at it at multiple levels. It's like, how would someone with these tendencies respond? It doesn't necessarily mean they become evil or this chaotic evil thing. It's just that's the direction that Geth goes down. Yeah, and it's not like they're going to be in a group of people and decide, I'm just going to start killing everyone. They're still right. thinking about the ramifications because they still want to live. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have to think of it. Instead of insane kindled, I'll have to think of a new uh, like name for that. But I like the idea of like an enlightened version and then like a deranged version. And again, that's not really the the name I'd go for, but it's definitely a a thought of like these two extremes oh i love that that is so fucking cool so 
I almost, oh man, you know what? I almost imagine Geth like almost becoming like, not not a, like a, like a, not, not necessarily a story threat, but definitely somewhere in the background in phase three because he's essentially become this like, almost like this mad king sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm so, taking care of my dude. I eat the brains and I give him the bodies. Mm -hmm. oh, well, nom, nom. So it there's a there, so that's that's a good question. So let me go ahead and add that to note. Geth the Mad something. I'm just gonna put Mad King now because that's what I keep hearing, but I know that's not the direction that Geth would and we would definitely want to talk more about that. Stable, unstable kindled? Ooh, I kinda like that too. I'll make a note for that. Uh Summer. What's Hi. uh what's uh what's to last doing? Like to last is I, already I live a while forever. Ago. I got a lot of plans, man. Well, so at 60 years you transform into a fucking vampiric wraith almost. So what's your yeah. what's your are you are you embracing that? Like what are you what are you doing about that? Well, I wanted to ask sure for if him and Alas wanted to like stick together and she eats people's brains and then I know he ate people, so for his sustenance, he eats the bodies, and we just tag team it up like that. Are you gonna? Are you going like the twisted insane route as well? The, the sort of like. Oh no, she's she's sane. She's just dying. She hungry, but also that's her friend, and she care about him. Oh, so she. Oh, that's such a fucking sad story. God damn. She's like, <laughs> this is my crazy dog. I love him. Oh man, I'm like, I've been even thinking about like if a party ever encountered you two in phase three, it literally would be like, it would literally be like Geth is just become this like font of, of, of madness and insanity. It wouldn't be just like medium sized Geth. It'd probably be this like large or huge sized twisted creature of the black star. And yeah, then we're there's- like a, formed by shadows. So like you can do that in any way too. Like absolutely. maybe the enlightened ones turned white. Yeah, the dark yeah, that's and rapid ones start growing random grotesque things that make mm. them look bad. And <laughs> reminds Talas of what she thinks her dad is. Well, Talas Tala would probably still take more of that, like, almost that 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 wrath-like form, because that's still gonna happen. Like, you're you'd probably still be have like you know little elongated limbs, uh, multiple jointed a little bit, but it, maybe a little hunchback, I would say, but you'd still, still have- Still has the head dent, yeah. Still has the mask. It would be like old and twisted and dented. And you, but the thing is with you, you're not like, he, 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 I've gone insane. You're still, you're just an older version of Talas. And you would just hang around to make sure that Geth was doing, was doing okay. And it is, it's just that it, it's kind of sad, not a little bit because it is, you're just, it's, it's not even like I've chosen this lot in life because, you know, he, you know, this is my friend and it's, it's a tragedy. It, you were literally just born. So it's, it's all, you know, <laughs> it's literally like, this is life. This is what life is. It I is imagine like she does some of her own stuff, but like when Geth was insane, insane, she like stuck a rock in his goop and was like i'll find you when i need a rock you in his goop <laughs> like a little I, I use rock. i use fucking tracker what is it locate object all right that's where geth is when he gets a little too close to that border there that's when i go like hey man what's up yo what would happen if someone killed geth or geth died what would happen to last would you say oh god it depends on how soon it would happen i guess it depend how he dies too yeah, yeah, that as well. No, I genuinely would feel like I, I like, like honestly, like genuinely, I feel like Geth would be around for Phase Three, like just not necessarily like as a, an actual like focus point, but would definitely be there in the background somewhere, either on the hell, back on the hellscape, or somewhere on Io, or in the depths and hidden away of uh, of Io, because it is you just. It, it, you're Geth's being tormented at this point in time, like mentally, I would imagine. So I, it's just you're just surviving. I would feel like, you know. I think at that point, like Talas would probably, because I don't, I don't think her race dies. I don't remember that. So if I keep feeding, I keep living. Yeah. So I would kind of be like damage control for Geth in a way because she cares about him, but she also, you know. She doesn't care for people, but at the same time, she's like, ah, oh, shit, I know we can't, like, blow up cities without, like, causing, like, a bunch of, a bunch of damage and people are gonna come after him more. 
So she's damage control in a way that's like, I'm gonna let him vibe and live his life, but also like, if he starts getting too close to that major city point, like maybe like, turn, we turn, we like, guess this way I have bodies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If uh, if Geth ever went, uh, somehow went to the Shadow Veil, that would be, that would be a bad, that would be 100% a bad. Is why that, would that be bad? I'll tell you why that would be bad. So the Shadow Veil is literally a plane of insanity uh, where the original, the, uh, the, the Astari, the original Astari of Io, uh, when the Nova Instant happened, their spirits and souls were severed away into this veil of madness, essentially, at this point in time. And it is literally just the spirits and souls of a starry that are now in this sense of like purgatory like they, they're they're just they're just they never die and it's kind of what you're going through they're just they're slowly their minds are becoming warped and twisted and losing their minds and now because of the end of phase two um that that's the devil race is in the is in the shadow veil uh end of phase two uh the shadow invasion failed and the shadow lords were banished back into the veil so you got like asmodeus and mephistopheles and all them they're just hanging around ready to break through and, and fight again and if you're already this font of madness in like a veil of insanity i have no idea like <laughs> what maybe the gonna go start the him. blood war Maybe that he'll turn into a person that tries to takes everyone's souls because then you're gonna start his mind. the blood war, dude. Well, no, um, like I could literally, if Geth ever went to the Shadow Veil, I think Geth would get the voices back, but it is not the voices that you'd be like, finally, <laughs> I, I, but it's literally just the screams of insanity of the fallen. Sh you would become this sort, this, uh, you wouldn't become Geth anymore. You would literally be this giant, shadowy, twisted abomination, both demon and devil, that is just on its own you were just a mal malviolent force of of madness and insanity you don't have intentions you don't have feelings you don't have goals you're just literally the essence of insanity you are at that point deetic level of threat because it's just yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yep yep sick yeah that's pretty uh pretty awesome fuck <laughs> god damn that would be wild Ah, uh, good things to know. Anyways, making a note. Uh, Geth plus Shadow Veil equal bad. Oh, uh, can I talk about what I want to do in my free time when I'm not babysitting Geth? Yes, I have a feeling, but go on, go for it. Start, I would like to start the Mafia of Demons. A Mafia of Demons, please, please explain. I want to make a drug ring. There it is. Pillaging <laughs> <laughs> and, and Talas is like, yeah, That's yeah, right. this is great. Maybe and then I want to ask my mammo like bros if, like, we want to start producing drugs. That's gonna be the next. That's gonna be the next question. So here's the thing. So, yeah. I I've been thinking about this for a minute, Summer. Yes. What would you um hmm, if you had to give a different name to meth? What would it be? Mm, give me a, give Stardust. Me a, oh my god, that's beautiful. Uh, dealer Stardust. I I just know that she's gonna take after her grandma, and she wants to be in a position of power that can threaten other individuals because eventually she wants to see the downfall of society, much like her grandma did. Mm -hmm. And she lives forever, so she's she's gonna do it eventually. Right. And uh, I think a mafia would be a fun way because she also likes drugs. So let me uh, now let me hop over to uh, Sam. Sam. What yeah? What would your, what would your Mammoth, the Mammoth brothers be doing at this point in time? Because I genuinely believe you would not be met with hostility. Like you, there wouldn't be people being like, "What are you?" It would just be like, "Oh, hello, who the, who the heck are you?" You know, like where did you come from? This is such a curiosity. But the you way, yeah, go for it. So the way, the way I envision it is unburdened by the group mm -hmm. and especially like the you know granny basically like held them held them back almost mm -hmm. <laughs> um they would set the land asunder so it they would are, be they, they are have the... come from a place of suffering and strife where you fight for everything you have to this world of abundance where everyone is soft 
and they would just take what they please. Jesus. And they would just ra like it would be a historical event. They would be, by very definition, like warlords. It would be like when people talk about demons, they are specifically referencing like these two as like yes. There's like Talas and there's the others, and they are they're monsters, right? But these yeah. guys are demons. They are these, they are they are the cracked black of skin demons. with glowing red veins. Yep. Like they yep. are merciless, and I think like that kind of mentality would attract people to revere them as well like you know how you you obviously get like these cults to the satanic and, and right so that, that would absolutely be like a cult of the demonic where like these guys would be worshipped uh, a cult um, of the nova uh, uh, almost, yeah as yeah. like war monsters and like they would just it, it wouldn't even be so much as they would slaughter everybody like if you bend mm -hmm. the knee they would accept it and i think like that would amass power and cause and they would just just cross the land and take what was theirs, enter oh a kingdom and walk out the other side. Like whatever they wanted, they would just be testing their their power, their strength. Like the TikTok against, song. Against this entire world. <laughs> nice, nice right? dude. Because it's like, they felt like they were unmatched in this other world. What What is there here? And I, so I don't know to what degree that would be taken. Right. Um, for you. I don't no, know that, if they, that's, that's why they we're would, having this, yeah. you know, seek you know, power and eternal life, and like essentially become uh, a twisted form of deity, right? To like, to like, dark people and bandits and right. cults and cutthroats and all this kind of stuff. Are, are you still under the mindset of like the strong survive, which means you take what you want, and if you don't, absolutely, that yeah. is that is that was their their complete mantra. Like they lost their whole tribe to that way of life, mm -hmm. and so it's like, yeah, they're gonna just keep going. The thing that is interesting to me is like. They're two brothers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't have any way to reproduce, and they're they're not immortal, right? right? So it's like, at what point does the story end, and how does it end? Well, so here's here's the thing, right? Is if a Deborah is you know charging admission for people to, because at first you guys would be the only ones that would be in yeah. in, in IO. You 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 have free reign. You do whatever you want. Um, there will eventually come a time, whether it be a, 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 a months or years in the future, that the debt, like the the people of, of of the hellscape, will see the giant beacon of black star energy that is that portal and go, "What the fuck is that?" Go do it. Meet Deborah, who's like, "Hello, would you like to actually have a future than be on this blasted scape?" And that's that's where at that point the gates are just torn open and and you would actually have mammoths and Aro and uh these twisted aurorans and astari begin um flooding but because of deborah's control of you need to come back um it wouldn't necessarily create like this cascading overflow where like jesus christ the world needs to turn and end this threat because the world would turn and the world would probably contain it but never necess but never stop it which is why yeah. it impacts that so because of that the mammoths i feel like would have the ability to continue to reproduce here's a question because you 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 mentioned it briefly and i, I just want to make sure i mm. clearly understand this do you, so pe if people you know bend the knee to the mammoths and fight alongside the mammoths because they realize once they learn more about the mammoths and their their way of culture maybe some more like uh like warrioristic uh tribes of people may be attracted to that and may even not necessarily try to negotiate to stop but to, they may actually like be like fight alongside with you because they they see a sense of honor or even they look at that as like these are these I are think creatures it's the opposite worships it's 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 the the opportunistic it's like the people that want to prey on the weak that don't want to follow the rules that want right. to take what they want i think like the mentality of the strong survive the strong take what they want and then yeah. to visually see these two incredibly strong elephants mm -hmm. mm -hmm. putting it into action right and taking what they want uh -huh. And then just saying, you know, bend the knee and follow me and you can have whatever you want because that's the way we live our lives. Right. I think that would attract a lot of uh, of ne nefarious people to that way of life. But Almost would, like an would, age of outlaws. Yeah, but would, would the, the Mammoth 
would the Mamorath at that point in time allow them to join? Or are you talking more about like, would these outlaws be fighting alongside with the Mamoraths or would they almost kind of be like scavengers that, uh, you know, after the Mamoraths come through with- Oh, 100% scavengers. Yeah, they, I mean- The Mamoraths wouldn't invite them to their tribe, Yeah, to the brothers, they are also weak. These people that, right. that are following in their shadow. And so it's more like they these people adopt the tenets and the philosophies mm -hmm. that these demons had. Um, but they're not on footing with these demons. Yeah. I almost, I know, I, I, even though people come through the portal, it wouldn't, I still don't know about the reproduction thing because say like a female Mamorath comes through and then right. what, like, he, and then- I honestly, know, I genuinely don't goes think the back brother- back again? Right, right. So here's the thing is like, so the, the way I envisioned this, the portal opens up and you guys appear in oh, essentially what is a small civilization. It's a small, it's a small mm. island um, at this point where there's just miscellaneous um, like villages and towns and people in there. It's not exactly a, a, a ruling kingdom, but because of that, you guys, if you wanted to like completely just tear through and 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 re wreak hell, you can absolutely do that. And in time, within the lifetimes of the, of, of the brothers, uh, you guys would actually probably just take the island for those that are coming in. And it would be the same thing again. It would be people just absolutely ravaging the land until suddenly the, 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 you know, their land would be devastated and then they would begin to split up and slowly begin to explore. So now you've yeah, just got, I like that. they're just scattered all over IO looking for more things. To, so they're, it, it it genuinely almost feels like the demons never really organize to do like to cause like terrible harm to io but they're always a threat they're always in the background and they're always yeah. spreading there they'll never be welcomed in society i'll tell you that right now because so if you, they, the brothers yeah. would never take the time to learn about this world right it's like they why it, right. it has everything they want they, they don't we're need taking to. what we want yeah yeah so they i mean they would they would probably take that island and then you know going. they would probably jump you know, board a ship and that was the last time they were seen yeah just... because i was gonna say i don't i don't think there would ever i don't really think there would ever be a especially if that's the the path that the brothers are taking i don't think there would ever be like a like uh, a descendant of them you know what i mean yeah i, I that's what i mean i don't think there would be either yeah so the, the think, ones that, that I think would be like, there, any any like lingering element of them would be through their deeds, right? Or and stuff like that. It'd be like mm -hmm. they came here, they did this, and like they would have been like the first eye openers of like what demons really were, mm -hmm. and like kind of shaped. I mean, maybe the world did react to them. You know, maybe they they crossed that ocean and like. You know, it, oh, it the world would to, absolutely react. It took to armies them. to bring down two two elephants, right? And they were just like these. God, whatever you these Vikings! Are, like, it is, it is. And, whatever and these things are, like we cannot let them. Well, roam here or here's the problem. Here's the big problem for 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 Aya. If you guys like appeared in like the middle of like the center of a kingdom and things like that, there would be death and destruction. But at the same time, like you guys would have, you would have been wiped out because it would have been yeah. five versus an army. <laughs> However, you started isolated in an island that no one knows slash cares about while people are dealing with the shadow invasion and recovering from the shadow invasion that people aren't necessarily aware of you as a threat. And once that island become, is wiped out and essentially becomes like the demon haven that is that island and then you all just spread across the world of Iowa at that point in time, People may at one point be like, who the fuck are these these creatures that are period? And once they discover the source and where it's come, it's already too late at that it's point. It's too late, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if they seal the portal and close it all off, it's it's everyone spread out. You guys are, you know, not, not trying to belittle, but I mean, you guys are effectively like cockroaches. Like you've already spread across all of IO at this point in time. You're gonna continue to push. You're not a, a direct assault. There isn't an, a, a thing to go after you're just so wide and scattered out that combat is on a base to base to base basis and but that everyone yeah you're it's it's too late at that point now here's a question do we want 
half Mammoths. Yeah. Would that be because I, I I would almost feel like if there is a half Mammoth, which I have no idea what the fuck that would even. I'm, be. Yeah, I'm trying to mentally picture I mean, that. that, would, that it, it would be uh, it would be Luxodons, right? Well, Luxodons already oh, exist uh, because Octo played a Luxodon. Well, that's what I mean, but it would be half, half Mammoth, half Luxodon would be the race. It. Someone said that sounds like uh, that could be Goliath a little bit, almost like like. <laughs> Almost like leathery people, which would be a little weird. And, yeah, I know. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. You know, like it's, cracked. Like the, the yeah. The, the Tao descendant sign is like the red veins, the cracked leathery yep. skin. Yep. 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 And but that's the thing is like once you once you have like half demons, half half luxodons, that's where you get into like tiefling territory. That's where you get into yeah. people that are. Because the other you, concept is like the the people that proved their strength to the brothers maybe yeah. like partook, partook of their blood right or something oh and so it, it isn't necessarily a reproduction thing it's like they actually drank the blood of <laughs> of the bamer of the of the brothers yeah of those and that that have shown their honor um and have, have done that yeah that could be a thing Ooh. deformed them in some way and then was passed down someone said mamma half and i'm Equally <laughs> impressed. Yeah. I mean, we've already been making the elephant jokes. Oh my god, I'm equally impressed and disturbed at the same time. I like that though. I like that. Um, but yeah, okay. So yeah, we could totally have like because the others that are com coming through the portal at this point, we've got the sub races of the um of the kindled, which can absolutely be just ongoing living creatures that have done this thing and, and, and kind of like scaled back from the peering through alternate realities a little bit it's never the same as what the kindled were and the kindled at this point in time are, are effectively they're gone as a race i mean that that's just that yeah. especially yeah you're you're the, the first and last pure kindled at the, that that has ever played sure for because at this point kindled have permanently been changed either into um this the, these two things someone said the chard uh as someone who is more on the like the darker end of that which i actually like i like the mm. idea of like the chard you know um, descended from demon yeah but i mean i it, mean it, yeah i mean in essence right if 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 any number of demon from the hellscape can come through then they could be descendants of any kind of race it, well, Almost. so the Auroran, the Auroran tieflings are are humans. They're just humanoids. So yeah, the tieflings that's what, that's what are I mean. there. Yeah, and then you've got Astari. So Astari would be a playable race again, um, because I feel like the Astari have always, even though they're like tribal, and no one's played in Astari, so I kind of have to like take my own, my own like like cre creativity, creative thought with this. The Astari are effectively returning back to their homeland, so maybe they would start in the same way that everyone else would, but there would definitely be a sect of, of, of enlightened Astari who would begin to learn more about their homeland, their native lands. They may even see old Astari uh, cultures and, and, and mm -hmm. things that have been left behind here. Um, so that, But that does mean the Astari will be a playable race in Phase 3. Um, even if it, even if it's not the same as the Astari that were before, there would definitely be the original Astari and then this new Astari. There's also I, I would, forgot I forgot all about the Jackal folk. Yeah, Jackal folk. Yo, look, Jackal folk are effectively gnolls. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just yeah. they're just it's a new knoll that is now wandering around. There's nothing different, exciting different, about that. Uh, pattern. That's what it is. I mean, it literally is. Yeah. It's like you got gnolls fucking around and you got Jackal folk, folk and they're just doing the same thing. There's nothing I would, impressive. About I would say folk. Vulcan and his brothers like story would be of like utterly selfish conquest yeah it would just be like complete like desire for power and material like wherever yeah. they went and how how that ends i guess Battle. is up to you i mean if you, you want you guys, them to you guys would die. eventually you would you would keep going die you know yeah. one two v hundreds in a battle it, th and that's they what it died is. with a smile on their face and it absolutely and that's you, what horrified you the, people, to an army. the fact that they were smiling and yeah oh that's my what god people that's the and it uh, maybe now it's like literally just like a fairy tale right it's like oh yeah a hundred percent these it's a fairy tale like these things weren't real they couldn't be they're real. they're, they're folklores for the memory yeah yeah mm -hmm. and probably the luxodon as well is just these two 
elephant, you know, like creatures, these fa <laughs> these, these fantkin essentially are just have just that created such devastation. It would be a folklore it, that that you tell to children at night of just these, you know, these two brave warriors that faced off against the honorless armies of mortal. Maybe man. there's um maybe there's like a a specific place where like nothing uh, will grow. Oh, like the uh, battlefields maybe. that they, they yeah, died it's like at? where it's like where their blood was spilled, where they fell. Blood fields, and it's, it's like fields. nothing grows in this field. It's like tainted with with their blood. It's the opposite of back home where we used blood to grow food. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the blood fields where the memory of withers fell. The cool thing about that is that your story would be that of folklore, but what makes it extremely interesting is that it's a, it's it's a true event that would have actually mm. happened. You know, but it's it's so out, it's so wild and out there that it, it folklore is like, is like my favorite shit, dude. Like I love yeah, that. that that it is a folklore, but it, the, the truth is it, that should happen. You know, you guys would have been facing off against these. these and there's so many different guards, variations yeah. of the story, and no one's quite sure what's real. You oh, know? there's like extremes and shit. Oh yeah, absolutely. These and they were giant, thirty yeah. foot tall, and they were you know this this and this. And... No, I, I I definitely think some mammoths would kind of like that are still around and especially those that have followed. There are definitely a version of Mimoraths that would be the the the, the Baylors of Io, which are for for those that don't know, Baylors are like those are the those are the big daddy demons. Um Balrog uh, is also an example of a Baylor. Um they like Balrog and Baylors are just like it, almost interchangeable. Um mm from Lord of the Rings, like if you remember the Balrog, that's a Baylor. And I can totally see like uh, some variation of Mimorats becoming those massively sized creatures that kind of like go in at that point in time. But yeah, there really? would be, there'd be dark cults. There'd be warrior, you had the warrior cults. Oh, fuck yeah, absolutely. What were you say, Summer? I said, I like that we're like four different dichotomies here. We have Stir back in the hellscape, who's like the civilized of us. Yep. Then we and have the warlords and the very violent Mamoras. Then we have Talas, who's just kind of she she kind of crazy, but not totally crazy. Right. And then we have Geth, who's just insane monster boy and like losing his shit. Well, it's it's really cool that you guys did that, right? Because that it, just like in like D and D books, when you kind of look at demons, there's not it, it, everyone. No, there's no everyone's not a copy paste demon. There's all these different variations of demons with different goals and different aspirations of why they are demons. So like, I almost feel like with Deborah, Deborah would sort of like inspire that sort of like power without having to be violent or power without having to lift a finger. That sort of like manipulative like tendencies of, of, of like the other side of diplomacy. While you like, I almost feel like Summer, like your character, I don't know if insidious is the right word, but there definitely is that sort of. Oh like, no, she wants to start a mafia. Absolutely insidious. Uh, insidious, yeah. So that, but that's like at a completely different level. Like with with Deborah, there's that smile, you know, that that's you know, smile to your face, and before you realize it, your your world has been completely, you know, turned upside down because Deborah got what she wanted, but you feel like you got what you wanted. With you, with you, there is that like upfront insidiousness that you would almost see at that point. The Mamoras themselves are literally that of wrath, just the demons that you, the, yeah, you would they're, see they're that like, are just tearing shit. They're the flame that burns so brightly that is gone, you know, yep. like in in 40 years, whereas like everyone else is like these- I remember these, them. <laughs> time, these unlimited smaller flames that just burn in the background of Io. Mm -hmm. They just like, their whole thing was like, in our lifetime, we need to leave our mark on this world, and they they literally, literally left a mark. They literally <laughs> left a mark on the ground. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That. I'll that. make sure to clean the bird shit off your grave once a year. What grave? Their entire the entire battlefield they fell at is their grave. All right, I'll and... make sure a bunch of birds shit on the battlefield then. <laughs> um. Oh god, and... I forgot I was a druid. Yeah. Oh Don't no! The idea of, like the battlefield as well has just like become like a nesting ground to like wraiths and all manner. Of, oh like, yeah, monster. absolutely. It's, it's just not... like a place like you don't cross through. You don't go. Yeah, there's no reason to go there. It's it's scarred land at that point. That literally is the the epitome and the the like a chunk of the hellscape. 
has like appeared, like it, it came from the. It's like it's literally like a, a, a chunk of hell. It's just there. It can't go. It, it never goes away. It's it's permanently scarred, a scarred placed upon Aya. Yeah, it's really fucking cool. And then yeah, Geth is literally just this like this twisted area. Geth is uh, I almost feel like the chaotic evil of the demons. If that if that makes sense, like. Even though those that are born kind of you're those that have uh, crossed over essentially or maybe even some sort of reproduction happened through like mitosis or something. Um, there is that just like, yeah, everyone kind of had a different direction, but Geth is like the, the true like chaotic, it, the chaotic evil uh, of demons. And while demons are typically chaotic evil creatures, everyone still sort of has like a different code yeah and i and i like Geth, that Geth came off to me like he, he was always in the pursuit of knowledge like he was always asking questions he was i feel like i feel like he would be like an eternally lifed like mad scientist almost it's like he would he would experiment on people and places and things mm -hmm. and just like he, he would he would have amassed so much knowledge further. but like he's also crazy right so it's he's like, trying to find the sense of reality yeah he he just what he is like reality cuts, oh he cuts God. people open and he sews things on other things that aren't meant to be and he just he tries every which way experiment to make sense of the world because he's he can't anymore and he never does geth so mm -hmm. like like sure for would you say that geth kind of had this like purpose ends up turning into this purpose of just like it, it, exactly kind of like what sam's saying like you're trying to control you kind of have this like twisted control a little bit of like endless experimentation because literally the question what is reality i feel is the epitome of gas like what exact what what is real it, it's literally that line of what is real because your belief in reality has been completely shattered and even though you're living like everyone else does it's so foreign to you that it almost feels like you don't know how and you're trying to establish that with the literally the what is reality. Would, well, would when we say? were in IO, the whole thing with how, and I was going to ask a question about this later too. Yeah, this is going to be thought provoking is uh, the kindled just pop into existence, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have like asexual reproduction or right. any sexual reproduction. They just all of a sudden you're here. Yes. But then you're spawned into this hive mind, so you already have set knowledge in a way of everyone yep. else. Yep. So they're effectively children, like child adults when yep. they're born. So mm -hmm. that's why he would ask questions, and he would ask questions as well because he can see into the future, whether that future is reality or not. So he already knows the answer, but he wants to know the answer from other people as well because they don't see what he sees and they're not a part of what he is yeah. or we is. So now it's come to the point where it's like you can answer your questions with another questions. How does someone deal with absolute silence? It's like he has insane tinnitus, right? Mm -hmm. Where you know how when things get too quiet, there's a massive ringing in your ear. Yeah. For now, he's in like complete silence when he wasn't in silence the entire point of his life. And he's gonna actually hear his own consciousness now, and he's gonna be wondering what the hell that is that's talking to him, because it's not we anymore, it's him. So it's like, that's why I also said I'd go down that route of he quells that silence with the voices of other people, whether that yeah. just be through conversation or screaming, and just basically he, all facets um, of everything in life. What if he just experiments on separating consciousness from body and like a bunch of other weird things? Like, well, yeah, maybe he try and like absorb other people's soul into his mind just so he could have a collective again, kind of thing. Like create his own hive mind for his victims. Yeah, just stuff, basically, like, just crazy experiments and stuff like that. At this point, there's like no limits to him. Right. But at the same time, he's gonna make sure he doesn't die because his existence is all he knows. Like, it almost sounds like Geth existing. Almost like, almost like Geth's des desire of, of existence is stronger than the, the mortal will to live. 
if that makes sense like you know like more mortal races always you know they they, they fear death they, they always try to they know to death live. will come but they, he doesn't know what death is he just knows yeah. he wants to be alive his like yeah. desire for answers transcends his mortality yeah but it's almost like geth fears death more than others because yeah that's exactly it geth wasn't supposed to die and now that that's you it's, it's not even that that's all the table you don't even know if you are going to die and, and yeah. you're not even certain like what where what is the 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 like everyone knows at some point they're gonna and, and sam has a good point everyone knows at some point they're they're going to die and they have a general idea of like probably around when that's gonna happen so you can almost prepare yourself for it but with geth it i just know be, i can die you you no that's that's the scary part. You don't know if you can die. Maybe he also doesn't know if he's already died. Yeah. Because that's, that's, why would that's the voices saying. stop if he was alive? What is death? Like, it literally is on that well, level. So why of is just, death? Yeah, it literally is that level of just like, you knew that you could never die. You knew you were always going to be immortal. But now you don't know. And there's not even like, well, now you have a lifespan. You're going to die in 200 years. You you don't know. There's just, just that's it. Just period. You have no idea if death is coming for you or if you're going to live forever or are you going to live for a length that feels like forever and then die later you, like there's just so many unknowns to you basically is a limit tester at this point yeah oh. me watching all this with my juice box yeah you go geth <laughs> <laughs> and then the okay, other question i believe in you yeah, yeah the other question is since Kindle can just spawn into existence. Does that mean they can just spawn into existence in IO now? So, and if they do, are oh. they the pure quote unquote? Right. So because they will spawn without the collective, so they will actually have a sense of self. I I've been thinking about this. I've actually been thinking about this. So because of the power of the Black Star, which is this like essentially this this great unknown phenomenon, this cosmic event. Um, at the Nova Hellscape, at, at the at Jupiter, essentially, where a Black Star incident first happened, that was the Nova incident. That's what split the Astarian Io over to the Shadow Veil. Vale. That's what blew up Jupiter into now the scorching Nova Sun. One, the the first known quote unquote Black Star incident. By no, I mean no one knows this, right? Happened at that but because of that one of the side effects of this black star incident happening was um the lagos the the memory of lagos that you guys fought uh tapped into that black star and kept using it for uh create for 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 like weapon night trying to weaponize a way to to fabricate io to destroy io and to learn more about the black star so Lagos is working the Black Star, but another side effect of this Black Star incident was the birth of the Kindled race. They started to pop into existence up here. Um, one of the reveals that happened, not in any campaign, but in one of our like lore sessions we did with the audience, kind of like showing like a side scene that I didn't want to do in front of like another campaign while this event was happening. Um, Lagos leaves. He just goes, "Look, it's I'm I'm done. I'm I'm leave." and his and when he leaves he it's unknown at this point he does something with the black star um the black star uh, uh, incident black star event he leaves he takes uh, a bunch of he, he takes cosmo with him he takes all these these things with him and he goes he leaves he heads out because of that it, it it's uncertain if lagos leaving is a catalyst for this but the kindled popping into existence doesn't happen anymore the way it used to they're all dead so they don't pop into existence because this black star instance because it's unknown at this point something has changed within the black the, 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 the black star event so the kindled aren't born because of that the only sources of black star energy is other kindled so because of that they do pop into existence but it's not that pure connection where everyone's a hive mind it's all right all, hit it, me it, out yeah in geth's quest to limit test his existence he understands that the mortal races reproduce to extend their legacy mm -hmm. and so any io ones are a product of him duplicating himself to <laughs> try and 
It's just like another form of experiment. And so they're all like damaged. They're not connected, but they're all part of, he's like the father. I uh, see, like, I, 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 I like that. The one thing I was thinking is almost like Geth is trying, I don't know if Geth's interested in this, but like Geth's trying to figure out because right now, like the appearance of the kindled is it's still a great unknown. It happens. It, no one really knows the source of it. It's probably the Kindle that's within the area of these events happening. Um, but I almost feel like, like, and correct me if, if this is not, in, I think Geth would be interested. Like, Geth wants to control the reproduction. So, like, Geth doesn't have the control over it. So there's still a lot of questions. But instead of that comfort of a hive mind being like, we are one like Kindle come into being uh, almost like newborns appearing out of nowhere it's a lot of questioning which does sort of lead to enlightenment as they progress in years and age um but it is that same thing where no i would dare say sorry i'm thinking in my head i would dare say these Kindle that appear um they do die after a certain time they they snuff out like that like a like a like they just like almost like a, a dying star they would just uh, they would appear but what after their death is just disappearing being removed from existence itself and i think that would scare geth if geth were to witness that and it kind of brings that limit of like is that going to happen to me one day how come that hasn't happened to me but at the same time like you, you know what i mean like there's just so many questions that could be in geth's mind but i i do like the idea of like like ionian kindled are, have a lifespan like they are they are right. not immortal the way i would probably see it is if he did find a way to artificially make kindled or even spawn them or they spawn randomly around him i think he would do it as a way as how it depends on what they would do like if they would follow him he would accept that but also not care about them at all yeah and if they just walked away he would just like let them go right because he's just so obsessed with his own existence in a way that no one else matters in a way. I, and that's the thing is like, I, I would say Geth never finds a way to reproduce him. Like, and yeah. when phase three starts, it is just, it is a, it, the appearance of a kindled as a cosmic event. He's just uh, a single cosmic entity. And as far as people know, they're supposed to die, but this one doesn't. Right. Well, some and they people don't might... know it's because he came from the hellscape. They just know he doesn't go away. I, I and that's what I say is I I think for the for the kindled they don't necessarily appear around. I mean some would appear around Geth, um, but I also I also feel like there wouldn't necessarily be like they they would still appear around Io, be born around Io, probably uh, probably in areas where life doesn't necessarily thrive or exist. But it is, it is a lot of just that they're born, um, but like a newborn babe, they, they don't know, they don't know who they are. They don't know what they do. And eventually they, they find that out, but they're almost like born adult and they have to like learn their own way. And I, I almost feel like where they are born and the area that influences around them is what it's exactly like, it's, it's just exactly like mankind. It's just kindled will form into the people they want to be that around there so that you will get like you know pious kindled you'll get um greedy kindled they, they no longer have like an alignment they lock into they aren't sort of like this copy paste hive mind they are their own lives but they also after a period of time die and when they die they they vanish they're removed from the they're just yeah they're removed do they from do there. they know this or is it like it just happened? I'm sure over time it would be documented. I'm sure at, at first, the first Ionian kindled wouldn't like, wouldn't know that. But I, I'm sure after enough documentation and enough times passed, I, I honestly think a kindled would leave, live anywhere from 60 to 80 years, just like a normal human life because they aren't, they aren't true. They aren't like the true kindled that was born. I from, guess like, my question is more like if they realize that they're going to die, but they find out that Geth doesn't, would they not seek him out? I think there office? would be a sect of Kindled that would hear legends and hear rumors of the, of, of, of the essentially a, a Kindled God. Um, some would seek them out, but just like anything in- You did it short for. 
You're a god. <laughs> <laughs> I think, god damn I, it, not again. <laughs> <laughs> He's just waiting for that. Uh, anything in, when it comes to anything in like a, a more, like, these kindled, I don't think they're, I don't think everyone would have the same motivation. It again depends on how they're born. Maybe some kindled do sort of like reach that enlightenment of like they want to, you know, learn more about themselves and kind of like go to the one true kindled. Maybe some other find different values in life than, than that. You know, it, it's, I, I want the kindled. I see the Kindled kind of becoming like any other humanoid race in Io, where it's like everyone has their dreams, hopes, and aspirations. Yeah, some will go, will flock to Geth, who doesn't give a flying fuck, uh, but others will just continue to live their life. I mean, honestly, yeah, I can see lore being built around the Kindled, where it's like, oh yes, some some of us go to pilgrimage to to, to see to see the you know the great Geth, um, but others they're like, I don't believe in that. And he's just the brain bleeds of a madman, a, a mad kindled, you know? There's definitely a lot of like lore and legend that can be built upon the kindled race as- Well, I feel it would have to be a quest for them too, because I don't think Geth would always stay in one spot. Yeah, you I mean, know, no, one know, no one knows where it is. So some people would spend their entire existence until they blink out looking for Geth. I, I, li I like that as well. And, and, but yeah, it's, and other people are just go, it's, it's not i'm not interested i'm not you know it's it's whatever it's beyond that you know i could also see um a, 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 like a guild of kindled who would seek out the newborn kindled and sort of give them the guy the, the, the guiding principles you know it would be like this is who you are this is what you do um and this is our history this is our story this is our you yeah like an entire like civilization and lore and legend can literally be built around the kindled what they would do what some want what some people do what they go over yeah i mean I, I feel like the kindle can really just expand there's a lot of lore uh, that could be expanded for 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 phase three i'm just i'm just running it all through my head there isn't a direct answer is the bottom line mm -hmm. everyone would have a different path and and what makes it cool is like yeah there are there are the like the tr it, it's it's exactly like tieflings and and demons or devils. You got like the pure kindled, which have these different dwarfed sects of mind that end up being really pow like these are powerful creatures. Like the original kindled would absolutely become these like forces of devastation um, or or life, depending on what direction they go into. And these new kindled, the the, the these new kindled that are born are just like. They're not even offspring, but they don't have the same power and capacity as these other kindleds that came from the Nova would have at that point. And while some would want to, like I said, someone would want to be interested in their history and race, others would just want to live their life for the short time they have there. Because it would be, it'd be like 60 to 80 years they would have left. And some people may, some kindled may want to like make that their, you know what I mean? Like make that their, their, their life, their focus. So it's, uh, it's a lot to think about, but it's really cool that we're, we're that we've gotten to that point and and sort of thought about that. So, Whew. okay. Um, so it's been about an hour. Is there anything that you guys want to like input or anything else you want to add to your characters? I think we got a good foundation of like what the demon races looks like on IO and what they would be in Phase Three. I think we got enough for mine at this point. It would have to be like circumstances. Yeah. And how you see how decide decision I, yeah i feel like the foundation has been set for everyone yeah i feel you know, pretty happy point. awesome pretty happy with the brothers yeah and and the legacy they've left behind and what all what memoraths are to io which effectively are just warlike demons they're they're war demons yeah. and some of That's them all ascend, i wanted yeah and some of them ascend to that yeah absolutely uh cool. i wanted on the record that my name in the mafia is the cosma father that that is my name that is it my name like, as uh, the head of the your, mafia your story feels like a legitimate comedy spin-off from like <laughs> that's what she would do though she isn't a serious <laughs> one like, we we like all have like these really cool movies and then you're like paul blunt more cop 
like, she was like, never serious <laughs> dude she was like chewing on the bottom of her grandma's scarf the whole time oh my god <laughs> she's oh. like i want power but also i want to be a drug lord but also i want to kind of pillage but not really pillage so i'll do secret hits on people i mean yeah the cosmonites is literally just this raw force of chaos is what i'm figuring out. and like i almost feel like like i had different i, I had like a, a separate idea of what a cosmonite was and then some are like went in a completely different direction with it and i i'm a, okay a blue dude stole my dad's body from space i'm starting the mafia i'm okay no 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 i'm not uh i'm not criticizing it it's <laughs> it's fine you, yeah i'll say you've, you've you've created something that is definitely uh chaos so that's that's that that's a different facet it's a different path to take all right I got so much knowledge and so much information. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all stopping by one more time. Yeah. Uh, you guys have a good one. Um, yeah, have a good good rest of your night. And thank you again. 28th. You too. 28th. Bye -bye. Oh, man. All right. Well, there you go, guys. There's our round table discussion. The fate uh, is it's literally called the fate of the hellscape because I wanted to know what happened and I feel like we got all of that good lore. Yeah, funny enough, I did not think we were going to expand upon the kindled lore as much as we did, but that is really fucking cool that we did. You know what I mean? That's rad. That's rad that we did that, so I'm pretty cool with that. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and bounce. Uh, you guys... Head on over to our Patreon. You guys have been going wild on the Patreon support. Patreon.com is where the bio. Uh, there's going to be, even though we're not doing any D&D games this month, there's going to be a lot of Phase 3 stuff being posted on uh, World of Bio, uh, including new uh, sub races, uh, new things that I'm working on. I just finished all the Changeling sub races. I'm going to work on Orcs next. And then I think we'll have our new two-page spread that I can release. Um, I'll definitely release a spread on Changelings. I feel like that's going to be a lot of fun uh, over on over on the uh, IO Patreon. Uh, you'll also see it here in MP3 the, of the Fate uh, of the hell, Hellscape that'll also be there. And some new uh, concept uh, art will be there. Any more roundtable sessions happening? I, yeah, I have to do, I want to do one with Whoops and Lawman. Effectively, the fate of Braun. Uh, after Sachi is uh, <laughs> ready to go. But I also have to, I, I've, I'm asking Whoops for a lot of stuff. And Whoops is currently focused on um, Final Fantasy. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. You know, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. But I really, I really would like to do a roundtable discussion and exactly what that would be and what that would look like. Um, if it doesn't stream, it'll be uh, offline. In which in case I, in which case no one knows. Smile. No one will know at that point in time. And that'll be pretty good. But uh, yeah, we're going to have some concept art um, being worked on, posted on. I uh, want to thank everyone who donated to the IO Phase 3 fund. Uh, that is That is a significant chunk of change that I can use to make um some more yeah some more more uh concept art which is gonna be fucking awesome and freaking amazing so tomorrow 12 p.m or somewhere around that tomorrow will be another concept art post as a way of saying thank you so much for your support our next goal is 500 dollars, which will be the io exploration music preview which is going to be a beta version um, we're currently working on the finalized version right now, which means uh, if we get to 500 before it's uh, finished, you guys get to hear a version that'll never be heard again, you know, because we'll have uh, moved on beyond that point. Um, next week, we're going to do a big, huge fundraiser week, but I wanted to go ahead and post that up now. Uh, so, yeah, thank you to everyone who has offered their support. Thank you to everyone who supports the Patreon. Head on over to our Discord. Join the community while you wait for Phase 3. And uh, if you, this is your first time even hearing about uh, World of Bio, we have a YouTube channel at this point. Send us somewhere. Chat, I'm going to tell you right now, I really, I'll send you somewhere if I want to send you somewhere, but don't ask me while I'm in the middle of my spiel. Okay, chat? Okay? Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, it's not Discord slash World of Bio anymore. Uh, no, it's not, Mike, because uh, we have to maintain... 15 like nitro boosts at this point in time um and uh if we don't maintain it we lose the we lose the the uh the link to the to discord 
So it sucks. It's unfortunate. Uh, we'd have to be a partner Discord, which they keep turning us down for whatever reason. I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just 14 and we have it, I believe. Here's the thing, Mike. If it dips down, we lose it. So, and every time we lose it and then gain it, I have to drop the link again. So it has to be maintained, which is really shitty. Yeah. And so because of that, I can't have a, an authentic World of IO link. Not yet. One day, maybe we'll be partnered. Um, I'm hoping after phase three, we can get some more attention to Discord, more love to the Discord, which we already have. We meet all the conditions, but they, uh, they're they just not interested in partnering us. So it is what it is. Get to boosting chat. It's it, again, it's not really about boosting because it's not a it's not a good model right you know what i mean like it's not a good model if we ever if someone it would literally mean people would have to pay monthly for that boost and ensure that they we got that it's not a it's not a uh it's not a good surviving model to ensure that for a vanity url so anyways nothing to worry about that is the discord link make sure you head on over there uh really do appreciate that well bam uh, go to our you. Oh yeah. So, anyways, before I was interrupted, uh, head over to our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash of Bio. If this is your first time watching a World of Bio thing, we've got an entire Phase Two playlist. So, hey, why not go over there, check it out, do your thing, do your thing, my friends, do your thing. And uh, that's it. Thank you for everyone who supports the Discord. Uh, just yeah, thanks for everyone who's doing that. Um, we're, we're putting a lot of love and passion into phase three, which is absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, makes me really, uh, makes me really happy that we're able to, to put so much love and attention and, and concept art to music, to all sorts of stuff. So thank you, thank you again. You know what I mean? I really do appreciate that. All right, guys, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, you're free to go wherever the heck you want. The, the places that I honestly, the places I would take you are the places that you already know. So I'll be back tomorrow with another stream. Uh, what stream I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, actually, you know where I'll take you? I'll, I'll take you to my buddy Nate, who just recently started streaming. That's a, that's a place you've never been before. Head on over there, drop some bread to love, bread to love, or whatever you want to do. Head on over there, got some bread to love, bread to cozies. Do what you gotta do. And uh, looks like Nate is playing Super Mario Superstar, Mario Party Superstars with his chat. Yeah. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see y'all tomorrow, uh, probably from another Stardew stream. Uh, we'll go from there. Thanks again for the support, and thanks again for watching. I love you all very much. Have yourselves a good time. Bye-bye.